Greetings everybody, I am Lobo and welcome to Luna. This is episode 50 of my Minecraft survival series, the World Tour episode, and you may be wondering why I am 120 some odd blocks up in the air on a slime pillar instead of down there getting ready to do this tour. And the answer to that question is fairly simple. Look at this view. This view is just amazing. This is the Luna Business District. This is the culmination of about a year's hard work right here, almost. And, you know, we have the farming district that's going to be over that way. And, you know, it's, it's not just this. It's not just this one area. Uh, you can kind of see where the wall is going to go around that way. You can kind of see where the wall is going to go around this way. You can kind of see the outline. And eventually the city itself will encompass all the area in between which I think is pretty cool. We're not there yet though, we're not there yet. Today though, we're gonna go on a tour of the business district and some of the other smaller things that we built around here. So let's just throw that over there. Oh yeah, that reminds me, there was another reason why I came up here and that was to show you guys this. We are still getting trophies uh, in this game. And what that basically means is that this world is a pure survival world. If it had ever been, in this edition of Minecraft at least, if it had ever been in a creative mode, if it had ever had host privileges enabled, any of that stuff, we would no longer get trophies. It doesn't matter if you change it back to survival, you would just not get trophies anymore. So we are getting trophies. This is a pure survival world on hard mode, and that is our city entrance right there. And there will be other city entrances. There'll be one over there in the farming district area. There'll be one, you know, you know, th there's going to be several entrances, but this is the main one we got going on right now. We have this piston door that leads into this, this build right here, which is one of our semi earlier builds is something I like to call the rotunda. So when we walk in here and let's make sure we close this so no creepers walk in here, no zombies come in here and invade our city. We gotta make sure we keep that locked at all times. But this is the rotunda, which I am loving. This was an early build of ours and it's actually one of my favorites still to this day. So we can come down here to the bottom and you can see we have this little park area set up. Uh, we got some benches set up so we can look at our fountain right here. It's a nice little beacon fountain. And we do have four beacons in the business district that kind of radiate out from all four Four corners and encompass the entire business district and some of the surrounding areas but yeah I think I think this is actually pretty cool uh, we also did a lot of our early experimentation with landscaping here so we have like green concrete powder right here grass blocks uh, green carpet you know we learned a lot from this place a lot of stuff we're gonna carry forward this place really set the tone for the rest of the city uh, the roof up here this is something I really love like I like the foliage around the side I like the glass up there it I think that kind of turned out awesome really and uh, if we head up this way you can see we have a member of our K9 city guard right here. Uh, he is actually new to the force. That's why he's on guard duty. That's why he doesn't have a name tag yet. We will get you named eventually, but he is keeping our city safe, which is, you're just doing a great job. Anyway, let's head over here to the visitor center where you can see we have a moon carved into the floor right here because our city is Luna. And you know, I think this area could maybe use a little something by kind of like how open it is. We have these uh, doors right here and which is a similar door that you'll notice throughout the city. This diagonal doorway that I really like to build for some reason, <laughs> just stuff stumbling across it while doing the city entrance and we kind of carried it forward throughout the city and like had that be a unifying feature. Uh, but this was one of the first big builds we did and this kind of signified to me that hey we can do this. We can build the city. Lobo get to it. Uh, so I guess where do we go from here? Where do we start? Uh, I guess we'll start in the center of the city and kind of work our way out the center of the business district and then we'll kind of work our way out. I don't want to go in any particular order like build order or anything like that because I honestly don't remember the order in which we built everything. But if we come down our pathway right here into the New Moon Mining Company mining area, uh, we can see that we have a villager right here. <laughs> I spent so long trying to get these guys out of this area last episode and they're already coming back. Anyway, anyway, this is the enchanted pickaxe. This is something we built very early on. This in the fountain right here. Those are like episode single digit episodes, really. Let's go inside and check these these things out real quick. And the goal of this place was to have a place for our miners to just come and unwind after a hard day's work. So we gave them a working pool table right here, which does absolutely nothing. Uh, we got to reload the billiard balls in there. We also gave them a working pinball machine which makes lights and noise. That, that's basically all that does. Unfortunately, to shut them off, I do have to go down here and collect the money, collect any profits that our villagers who actually don't carry money on them <laughs> give us. So let me just pop in here. We'll collect this out of the hopper and uh, we'll also, where is the one for the pool table? Uh, it's been so long since I've been down here that <laughs> I forget where everything is. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get this reloaded for you. I'll show you that in action. 
Uh, but I guess uh, let's go ahead and figure out how do I get out of here? Let's figure out how to get out of here. And then I will show you some more stuff that we got going on in the Enchanted Pickaxe. So let me go ahead and introduce you guys to Chad. Chad is our head chef back here who makes sure that all the miners who come into this place are fed. They sit down right here at these uh, little piston tables that we got set up around here. Sometimes the villagers like to stand on them. <laughs> but we have the wither on the wall right here. This is a bow from episode 40 that deserved a place of honor. We took this off a of stray when we lost our own bow during a triple wither fight. And that thing was instrumental in helping us survive that battle, that epic, epic battle. Uh, but the Enchanted Pickaxe is a restaurant, basically. So, you know what? We need food. And this is where we actually do get food from this place. We have our little nano farm set up right here. Uh, which could use some work on the timing. The piston timing still a little bit off. I haven't, I haven't tweaked that yet. Uh, but I will eventually. This does provide plenty of food, though. It provides plenty of bread for me, which is my main source of food at this stage of the game. And I guess that's really it for the Enchanted Pickaxe. Unless I go ahead and load this thing back up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to load that back up and then we'll move on. So to get this thing started, basically just throw all the balls into the pocket and now the game is ready to go. Everything should be loaded. Let's go ahead and put our money in and give this thing another try. So bop and there we go. Perfect. Perfect. That is exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, and now I need to go ahead and load this thing back up again. <laughs> You know, it's fun little additions like this that I think really add to a build, kind of bring it to life, make it a little bit more interesting, don't you think? I think so. I, these guys, they just don't want to respond to me. I'm trying to talk to them, they don't want to answer. Anyway, if we head out here, we can see our fountain right here, which actually does serve a purpose other than being a fountain. Uh, you see we have hoppers down here uh, that kind of just have random stuff in them right now. And this is ultimately going to be an input for our storage system that we have yet to build. Uh, you will notice as we go through here that I do not have a dedicated storage system. Stuff is just placed all over the place. Uh, but right down here in our mine, that's actually going to be our storage system. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and have a look. It's not built yet. There's nothing in here at all. It's just a bunch of dirt right now. We will eventually get a mine built in, a storage system built in there. Until then, though, it's just going to be random chests placed everywhere. Some of them will be organized, like this one, uh, which has our travel beacon in here, extra armor. We have some swords in here, the skull scavenger. I found the original Skull Scavenger. We made the Skull Scavenger 2 for Wither Fight, but I found the original one hiding down in our mine. Uh, we also have some tools in here, uh, one that needs to be mended. We'll go ahead and take that with us. Well, I'll show you my mending process in a little bit. Uh, in here, we have uh, just some ores and stuff that need to be broken. We can actually go ahead and bring these over here because this... You know, I'll show you what this obsidian platform is right here. Basically, all we do is bring our ores over here where they need to be broken. We just stack them on top of the obsidian and get our fortune pickaxe, which is over here on the enchanted pickaxe. So let's go ahead and take this with us because we're going to need that to actually break these things. Um, so, you know, what? we can put that down there and we can also go ahead and instead of just breaking lapis, we can go ahead and break a couple emerald blocks. We can break a couple diamond ore blocks as well. So we just bring these over here to our obsidian platform and just chip away at them until there is nothing left but XP and all kinds of valuable gems. Uh, and I guess we'll just go ahead and put those away in here for now because we don't need to carry them with us at this point. You know, usually I will just let the, the ores pile up in there until we either A, need something, or B, the chest is too full, so let's just go ahead and break a bunch of stuff. Um, let me go ahead and make sure we got this pickaxe on us. We will be mending that a little bit and put our bed in our inventory as well because we don't want nighttime to come because you won't be able to see anything on this tour. Um, let's go over here. This is the last thing in the mining area. This is Donkey's house. Mr. Donkey's little house right here. He loves it, except for when villagers harass him. But I do think that is pretty much it for the mining area, above ground at least. We can go below ground and check out the mine itself. Uh, we have a little elevator right here that uh, I'd never really use and I can't find the button for. Um, how do I turn this thing on? <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, could have sworn there was a button. Okay, well, now I have a button. We'll see if we can figure out where it actually goes. Uh, obviously, not right there. That doesn't do anything aside from opening the gate. How about this one? Nope. Gate again. Uh, maybe right here-ish? Nope. I, I could have sworn this button went somewhere on this side, though. There we go. There we go. All right, so we have our elevator right here. It's a loud mineshaft type elevator, which is awesome. I never use it though, uh, because the ladders are so much more convenient. Like from up there, I can just kind of jump down the elevator shaft and catch myself right before I hit the bottom. 
It is super scary, but it is the fastest way down here and the safest way back up because the elevator does sometimes try to kill you. Um, so down here we have our slime farm over in this area and you can kind of see we have the big slimes going, we have the little slimes going. They're all jumping down into a uh, water stream. Well, like not really a stream, but like water that pushes them over to the magma blocks where they kind of just burn up and the minecart comes around and collects the little bits. It consists of three slime chunks and uh, we're gonna expand it upwards as well eventually. I haven't felt the need to do that in a while because having two platforms is plenty efficient enough for me as a single player. Uh, heading up here, I made a little mistake opening this area up. Uh, we kind of invited slimes into this area. So now they're spawning out here instead of inside the farm. Um, so we're gonna have to do something about that. Like this was our old branch mine area. And when we got a haste beacon, I tried kind of tried to you know open it up i thought that'd be cool if we made this whole thing really open and wide uh not so um we got zombies around here somewhere i think there's a cave up there actually i think there's a cave up there we'll find it eventually and kind of clear it out uh when we do the rest of the slime farm but uh yeah this is gonna be the unloading chunk right here where we're gonna have all our storage and stuff uh but as you can see this the minecart is not running at this point because well our system is just so full of slime balls is ridiculous. And we have our slime blocks right here that I, I actually craft. Uh, we need a lot of them. This is what I use for scaffolding. I kind of just leave them places. And actually we're gonna need a lot more than that because I'm gonna need to go pillar back up and take down that slime pillar that we started the episode on. So yeah, uh, expect the slime farm to be expanded greatly in the coming episodes. It's gonna pump out a whole lot of slime for us. And now you can see what I was talking about when I was saying the slimes are spawning outside the system. Now we got this big slime right here. He just spawns outside and we're not going to be able to collect any of his drops unless I actually like, you know, manually go and go and take them. I'm not going to because we have plenty of slime right now. I'm not too worried about it. But if we continue to move on this way, uh, we just had this guy. <laughs> Hi, he's, he's actually doing what he's supposed to do. If we go over this way, we can see our old string farm. Uh, when, I don't know why these slime blocks are here. Uh, I can't remember why I put those up, but I'm sure they're there for a reason, so we'll just leave them for now. But this is our old string farm, which we really don't use at all anymore. Uh, like, I have this glass up here now. I was thinking about converting it to an AFK string farm. Go away. Uh, I was thinking about converting it to an AFK string farm, because we also get, like, you know, little skeleton drops and stuff from here as well. But, overall, I mean, it's just, it's not worth it, because it's so much easier to shear sheep for the wool. And it takes this thing so long to, to actually get pumping and you know we have to wait a little while for the spiders to spawn and they're not even spawning at all okay here here we go here we go i was so worried that uh this thing had completely broken but no we got some spiders in here coming down uh but you know it's, it's just not worth it i think ow yeah i forgot about that you have to stand this is why you know i told you i'd never come down here more you have to stand back against the wall in order to actually hit them uh i put the glass there to make the af cable like you see that guy just climbed back up and then fell right back down. Uh, we have like overhanging water and stuff like that. I may go back and revamp this thing. I may, I may actually go back and revamp this thing because you know, this could be an easy way to get AFK string instead of actually shearing sheep. So that's something we might come back to in the future. But I think as of right now, you know, it's not something that I'm, I'm super happy with and I've complained about it before. You know, it's, it's not worth it running around just, just, you know, smacking all the spiders. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and just leave this thing alone for right now. We'll come back to it later, but we'll leave this thing alone for right now. And uh, I'll show you how I actually get my XP. Um, so we'll head back upstairs. You see what I'm talking about with the slimes? It's just... Uh. So I just wanted to have a quick sleep through the night so that way we can see what's going on and also to make sure we don't end up with a zombie siege during this tour uh, because I'm not completely sure that our city is zombie siege proof at this point. As of last episode, we made some changes to the city, which might have changed some stuff about how zombies spawn around here. Um, so yeah, I'll show you like our defenses eventually. Um, well, I guess at this point we can talk about our last line of defense, our, our iron golems right here. We have deputy iron Mike over here, over here. We have deputy Roxy Diaz. Those are our two, uh, our two deputies over here. We have Sheriff Farah, who is one of our older iron golems. He's the veteran at this point. So these guys are the last line of defense to protect our villagers. I will show you the other stuff as we get further out from the city, like the other like precautions I've taken. But first, let's go over here to Dunder Minecraft Paper Company. Uh, this is our massive sugarcane farm. We have three massive sugarcane towers back there, which we can kind of access going up here to the second floor. This will lead us to our, our managerial offices and our maintenance area. I have 
these trapdoors here because we have our manager that works up here and I have the trapdoors here just to make sure he stays at work. Uh, so this is Michael. Uh, Michael oversees all the operations here at uh, Dunder Minecraft. He is actually out looking into the distance right now, being very contemplative at this point. Look at him. Oh, man. That, hi. Hi, Mike. <laughs> what a pro. What a pro. I, I have full faith in him. But yeah, we can go back and kind of check out the actual sugarcane towers themselves. We go back here into the maintenance area. Uh, let's go ahead and close that. We'll go in here and we can kind of see the operation. Uh, and there used to be a ladder that we could climb up and actually see what's going on. Okay, here it is. So we have a ladder right here and we can... No, no. The actual ladder is right there. Uh, which we blocked in with glass when we came back here and made renovations to this place. So I can no longer take you up there. Uh, but basically, it works like this. We have our sugar cane on top of dirt blocks. Uh, and our slime block pushers just, just knock the sugar cane down and then they regrow automatically. Uh, providing us with plenty of sugar cane to make plenty of paper to trade with the villagers and make plenty of emeralds. And that's actually how I do my mending, uh, which we are just talking about. So let's go down here and I'll show you where all that magic happens happens. Uh, this is the first floor of Dunder Minecraft. Over here we have our lobby slash customer waiting area. If we go down this hallway you can see all our paper storage and if we go in here this is the office where all our paper trading villagers hang out. Um, so if we go over here we can kind of see Dwight and over here in the reception desk we got Creed. Uh, do you want to be the receptionist Creed? I kind of hired you as quality control. All right come on out of there. And over here we have Ryan who was initially intended just to be a temporary villager here but uh, he's kind of stuck around he's proven his usefulness uh, but yeah this is where I basically do all my paper trading and you can see like the lights are off on these but the chests are full that's because the hoppers behind them aren't full uh, when I do some trading here like I'll come in here randomly between episodes and do some trading so those lights being off doesn't really mean anything I just pull from random chests when I do that uh, but yeah to show you like you know how I meant stuff I basically take some sugar cane out of here and this is only going to net us like three or four emeralds probably uh, but I don't want to sit here all day because it does take a while but the reason why I do my my mending via via trading uh, and let me go ahead and take off my armor here because tools mend faster when you're not wearing armor in case you didn't know. Uh, the reason why I do my mending via trading is because it not only mends our tools and we get XP from it. Uh, we also profit with emeralds, which we use to make our beacons. Uh, Ryan, you do not have any paper for us. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Creed over here, uh, who is a new villager. We just got him last episode. We just brought him in here. And we'll just do that. And now uh, your XP fell behind the desk. <laughs> but yeah, now he's recharged. He's ready to go again. And we, we got a little bit of XP from that. And imagine that just repeated over and over again with all these chests full of sugarcane. Uh, so overall, I mean, this is more beneficial to me than having an actual XP farm because we get our, our emeralds for our beacon and stuff like that. Um, so I guess. Um, oh, you know, what? another thing. This is also kind of a glass farm <laughs> because like, you know, to open up Ryan's trade again, I would trade emeralds for glass. Glass, and that's what I do to open up their trades once they lock up. So you see we got a ton of glass stocked up in here for all of our building needs. Um, so let's go ahead and seal this place up and move on to the next area. Actually, you know what? We can probably leave that open. Uh, it's no big deal if villagers wander in there. I just don't want the paper trading villagers getting out. Um, so I guess next we will continue on this way. We'll go ahead and head over here to our super smelter. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and get some items to smelt. We'll go ahead and grab some of this gold and iron ore that we had in this chest right here. And we'll just kind of bring it over there and I can show you the super smelter in action. Um, and this was something that we completed fairly recently. So you probably have seen this if you're caught up with the series. If not, then I'll go ahead and show it to you. This is the perfect episode to get caught up with the series. Uh, so we just put our items in here and this whole thing, this whole system cuts on automatically once items get put in the input chest right here. And you see it's already sucking the items out. Any minute now, once that chest is loaded up, this ceiling is going to open up. Molten steel will start pouring into the center right there. All these furnaces will start lighting up there they go beautiful 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 that is awesome there they go okay cool so um yeah let's walk around this place while those things are smelting up here this is our second floor which is basically where we put our fuel like we saw our fuel and stuff up here our coal and everything like that we got the lava pouring down we got the particle effects of magma dripping from the ceiling I think that's awesome uh, yeah, this is our fuel chest right here. Uh, this is where we loaded everything up. And the reason why I put the fuel chest on the second floor is simply so I don't accidentally put in like ore or something in there and then clog up the 
the whole system uh, because that is something I would do. I would forget where stuff goes. You see me forget stuff already in this episode, so you know it happens fairly often. Uh, coming over here into the side area, we have our blacksmith, Bodan. He's uh, hanging out over here in his little workspace, and I guess we can go and check out like his little area right here. He has a little house back here uh, where he just comes to hang out and relax You know when he's, when he's not too busy. Uh, he can just have a seat right here and stare at the door. That's what he likes to do for some reason. Don't ask me. He arranged the furniture, not I. Um, if we go down here, we can see our maintenance area, which has a grass floor to it, and I don't like that. It's less complete than most of our maintenance areas. Uh, you know, I will go back and fix that, but I mean, it's pretty much it's pretty much a standard like you know auto smelter back here, and I won't get too into the specifics because we just went over all of them when we built this a couple episodes ago, and I guess that could be said for for most stuff here. If you have any like specific questions regarding details, maybe consult the video, or if not, you can just ask me in the comments. Uh, so we have this little well here in the center to kind of break up the road a little bit, uh, which has gutters in it, which I might try waterlogging at some point. That might look cool. And uh, oh yeah, another thing, the trees we have here, the custom trees, they're actually here for a purpose. Like you'll see this one on the left move out of the way as it reveals the farming operations office of Luna. And I think that looks pretty cool. Like having just having that reveal, like having stuff move out of the way for you to reveal the build behind it. Uh, the same with our farming operations office of Luna enforcement office right here where our iron golems and canines work. Uh, they got a little beacon fountain out here in the back for them. As I said, we got four of those throughout the city. Uh, but this is the iron golem entrance. Uh, it's a big entrance because they are big guys. They have their big storage lockers back here and their, their poppies, of course. And we got blue over here who is their dispatcher. Uh, he kind of alerts the, the iron golems and the canines to any threats in the city. But we can go in through the main entrance over here, which is not the prescribed route. <laughs> but this is the main entrance right on this side for the farming operations office of Luna enforcement office, which we built fairly recently. Uh, so all our doggies are kind of just hanging out in here. Just we're just waiting for something to do. It's a quiet day. It's a quiet day. We have a bunch of chests back here because I said there's no dedicated storage system. So I just have these like chests that are just chock full of random items, a lot of stone, a lot of dirt, a lot of, a lot of other stuff. Um, and I'm just putting more and more in here. But yeah, we will get a storage system actually built eventually that will hopefully kind of organize all this stuff a little better. Um, all the builds, like I try to complete them all, what, 360 degrees, like the backs, the interiors, everything like that, uh, just to just to maintain like this whole thing being like. Like even attics, we even added attics in here. I mean, there's nothing going on up in here yet, uh, but we will come up here once we can think of something to do. I want cobwebs and stuff like that. I haven't found any cobwebs in this game yet. So once we find those, I'll kind of decorate the attics a little bit more. Um, and we'll kind of do a whole bunch of them because we have a whole bunch of attics. Uh, this guy right here, he's uh, just chilling in his office right here. I try to keep these buildings at least somewhat populated. Uh, so you see, we got a, a villager right there just hanging out on his balcony, kind of enjoying the view. Uh, we got a couple other offices back here. They're unoccupied at this point. We're a little short on human personnel in this office, the in the law enforcement office. But if we head over to the administrative office, the farming operations office of Luna administrative office, um, and actually there's kind of a, there's a little pathway, a nicer pathway that kind of joins these two buildings. So we'll just take that instead of going through there. Uh, and I believe this door leads us into the main lobby. Yeah. And then we can, we have this back area again. I try to complete these builds all the way around. Um, but if we come back in here into our main lobby, you can see we got another villager standing on top of a table. Why do you do that? Um, <laughs> And then if we come up this way, you see we have a balcony with a nice view of the business district of Luna. So that way we can oversee all the stuff going on over here. This guy right here, uh, he's hard at work. This guy is out for the day. Uh, but these guys are doing great jobs here. Uh, these uh, signs on the on the frames here, they're meant to represent nameplates. I thought that was a cool little feature. If we come up here, we can see the uh, future Waterside District of Luna. We just got a ship built in there and some docks right now, but it will be further expanded. Uh, if we come out this way, you can see another district, the future Farming District of Luna, where we have a stable and a pumpkin farm over there. That will also be further expanded much farther back. Uh, we have an incomplete wall right there, which will be fixed. Like, uh, there's a whole lot of room for expansion in this place. But I mean, this part of the city, this is this is representative of what stuff will ultimately look like in the end. Much more complete. Uh, we got another attic right here. If we go up here, this is also pretty much incomplete. Once again, I want to I want to dusty up all these attics and make them look, you know, a little little more like attics eventually once we have the, the resources to do so. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the farming operations office of Luna. 
Um, I will mention that the you see there's no torches anywhere. Um, that's because we worked our lighting into the floors. We try to hide our lighting the best way we could. Same way without here. Just try to hide lighting all over the place. Make all places non-spawnable. Uh, because we are going to have our villagers roaming freely around here. So in addition to lighting, we'll have uh, we'll utilize half slabs like this. Uh, we'll also put fence posts and stuff around here. Um, see fence posts on there. Uh, we also use buttons because those are also non-spawnable. Basically, just to keep our villagers safe, as I said, they're going to be wandering freely around this city and a single zombie spawn could mean the start of an apocalypse. Uh, that's why we have these big fortified walls here. You know, that's to represent how safe I want this place, like massive fortifications around this entire area just to keep our villagers safe. Um, and I think that was pretty cool. This wall right here is actually pretty interesting uh, because you can see it's built at such a weird angle. This is very experimental for me. It's like the first time I really tried to build at, at such odd angles uh, and it's still a little wonky to me. It is um, because it's not even at a diagonal. It's at like a, a diagonal within a diagonal, which is super awkward. Uh, and if I decide I didn't like it, I was planning on having trees like come out of here and then kind of branching over and covering that up. But I do think I'm going to leave it as is for now until I actually decide like if I can improve it or if I just want to leave it like that to, to kind of show the progression as we build through the city and, and how, you know, we improve as we go along. Um, so next up on our tour would be our tree farm. This right here is Timberland Tree Farm, and you know, I guess we can kind of just walk the perimeter. I can kind of show you the story behind this place. I don't know if story is the right word for it, but right here we have a bunch of logs freshly imported from a far off land. So the idea is you know, the logs are not cut down within the sea. They're cut down somewhere else. They're shipped over here via our waterside district, and they'll be brought up this way to actually be processed into planks. Uh, so they'll come in here. They'll get loaded into this little elevator right here, which will take them up to the sawmill type area. Uh, so if we come up here, you can see where they come out of the system they go over here into the saw and you know get cut down um, I guess we can take a step back so you can kind of see what's going on it's not really beneficial for, to, for me to just rush through this area and not show you guys um, so let me kind of walk slowly through here you can see the whole process taking place where they're going through the entire system uh, and they're they're gradually being converted into planks until they finally come out here they are bundled up they are packaged and ready to ship off and that's the idea behind this place at least but that is not the functional part of this tree farm. Uh, the functional part of this tree farm is basically this guy right here. This is Sawyer the fifth, I believe, and he is instrumental in getting this place running. So we'll introduce you more to him in just a second. But let's go inside, shall we? Uh, the first place we'll enter is our storage system. This is where all our logs come after they are automatically harvested by Sawyer. Right here we have a sapling chest, uh, which has some of our saplings in it. Uh, which we take up here and kind of put into our automatic tree farm. And, you know, I guess we can kind of see this thing in action. Let me go back down here. Let me grab a couple saplings for you, and I'll kind of show you this thing at work. Uh, so we'll grab a couple of these oak ones, and yeah, let's we'll take one. That's all we really need. We'll do one demonstration for, for oak and one for spruce because they are separate processes here. Uh, so I guess first we can go ahead and start with spruce. So we just belly up to this little this little wall right here. And I believe this is already set up for spruce. So we can go ahead and just put the saplings in our inventory. Uh, we can toss it down here. And you can see the bone meal is not dispensing yet. It takes a minute to warm up uh, because this thing right here, Sawyer, I'm trying to talk to people. This thing right here is a Frankenstein version of several different, there we go. It's a Frankenstein version of several different tree farms um, that I kind of cobbled together uh, just to kind of make work with Sawyer so he can automatically harvest them. And it has to work slowly, usually not this slowly. <laughs> uh, is there anything blocking this tree from actually growing? No, there it goes, there it goes, okay. Uh, so it has to work slowly to give Sawyer time to actually harvest the logs because they will get converted from that stack of logs into a little row that, that are pushed in front of him that he shoots fireballs at and eventually bro blows up and puts into our storage chest for us, harvesting it automatically. Um, so, you know, we got little waiting areas and stuff back here. I kinda, I'll kind of walk around real quick while we're waiting for the system to reset with the plant our next tree. Uh, because it does take a, a second for, you know, this is something, this is meant to be an AFK tree farm. I was left on overnight and I come back in the morning and just basically wake up to a chest full of whatever log I decide to put in there. Um, so let's go ahead and, and convert this thing over to oak mode uh, for the next uh, for the next go around. I kind of show you that because slight changes are being made for oak mode. So what you can see here, if we pull this switch, the ceiling will lower down by two blocks and that will limit the height of our oak tree so we don't get any of those crazy gnarled oaks or anything like that. So as I was saying, like, you know, this is a this is a Frankenstein version of several different tree farms. You see oak harvests much faster than uh, than spruce does. 
Uh, it grows much faster, not harvest. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you're curious as to, like, what farms I put together and you want to see some, some videos I referenced for this, uh, just check out the, check out the actual episode that we did this in, and you'll be able to see that. Uh, so many saplings just go in there. Okay, <laughs> that's where we're at, our little sapling collection thing, but if you come down here, you can see we have a secret hallway at the bottom of our tree farm that has this little control panel right here. Uh, and this control panel actually opens this door right here. This is a little secret area. And it is a combination lock. So you can see if we pull everything, the door will still not open. You have to actually know the combination. And I'll go ahead and do that for you. We just want to pull this middle switch. That's going to go ahead and open it. Uh, as long as the two outside ones are on, the middle one is off, it will open. And this leads us down into our secret gas science room. Uh, where we have Sawyer the 6th in the bullpen right here, ready to go up if Sawyer the 5th ever goes missing. Uh, which is something that happened to, I believe it was Sawyer the 4th. He uh, kind of went off somewhere, came back and attacked me. Uh, this is how we get the gas through here, just this big nether portal. I don't want to go out there uh, because I don't want him to blow up. Yeah, <laughs> because of that. I don't want him to blow up the tracks or anything like that because it would be a huge pain to get everything fixed in there. So, you know, we won't go in there, um, but we have everything controllable from within this room so we don't have to risk going out there ever. Uh, we have various locks and, and procedures to hold him in place. Um, we have a, a way to reposition him. So when he comes through the nether portal, like we can actually reposition him with pistons that come out of the walls and down from the ceiling and push him over this track where we dispense a minecart and capture him. And then we can either lock him in place or release him to go upstairs. Uh, this is all incomplete. Um, there's nothing really back here to show you yet, uh, but it will be part of a much larger research facility. And I'm locked in. Uh, this will be much. This will be part of a much larger research facility. Uh, right now, it's just that one room. Uh, that's as far as our science takes us so far. But let's make sure we get this locked for, so villagers don't come down here and see stuff they shouldn't. And we can move on to the next part of our tree farm after I shut off this bone or bone wood dispenser. It's so loud. Uh, we can move on to the next part of our tree farm, which is the manual part. This over here, this area is known as the House of Leaves, and it is where we collect our dark oak. It's where we collect our acacia, the two types of trees that we can't get automatically just by uh, going to our automatic tree farm and just, just going AFK overnight. Like, we have to actually come in here and harvest those manually. Uh, this area is not complete. You can even see the daylight through here. Uh, so we will make some changes to this place. I want it to be much, much more expansive than this, but we can go down here and kind of see that... Uh, I actually have birch in place of the acacia. Birch and spruce because we were collecting leaves recently. I wanted a little bit more leafy variety, uh, but we'll go back and replant acacia in here. We got the dark oak right here. Again, I said we have to harvest all this stuff manually. We also have to come in here and manually harvest our leaves and stuff like that from our oak trees back here. Uh, if we just shear those, we shear the vines and stuff like that. Basically, all the other plant type stuff. Uh, we come back here, we get our shears from right here, and we go ahead and do our harvesting. Uh, right here we have a bunch of bone meal, we have a bunch of leaves, just, uh, just, you know, a little storage back here. Uh, more saplings and so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, there's not too much to show you in here. This place isn't super exciting yet. I plan to do more eventually. Uh, <laughs> I need to do something about these doors. Uh, this is the proprietor of the establishment, Cookie. Uh, he's actually trading this guy who's taken over for Zampano, who used to be downstairs. Uh, yeah, Cookie's the owner of this place. The bird is the owner. Um, as of right now. Uh, but uh, Cookie has this little living space back here. He's got his friends over, and uh, they're just kind of hanging out. Uh, again, you know, not too much. To see. Uh, just, uh, just a little back area. The, the, it serves no real importance. We have another attic up here. Uh, it's just something I like to add to make the build feel more complete, you know? Um, but if we come out this way, I'll kind of take you upstairs real quick. Uh, we're going to have a couple more little features again, just to make the builds feel more complete. We have a little dining room right there. Uh, if we come up this way, we kind of round this whole thing. Look at it. We have our nice little balcony overlooking the garden center right here. If we come around this way, you can see that we have a little bedroom for cookie and uh, a little office that cookie never actually uses. That's why the plants are dying. And, um, I'm missing a trap door here for some reason. I'll have to get a trap door, uh, to go in that spot. But yeah, I don't know what cookie did with it, but, uh, yeah, let's, let's head on outside and I'll show you this build. This is a kind of interesting build. Because, as you can see here, the, the doors on a diagonal, the building 
was built originally intending to be diagonal. There, there are straight portions of it now, but the original framework was diagonal. Uh, if we come down this way past our house, we'll tour that in just a few minutes. Uh, but if we come down this way, you can see this building has a pretty neat reveal too. You know, I like my reveals. So I talked about it with the trees earlier and stuff like that. Uh, if we come through this way, you can see the water tower kind of move on the right to reveal this building. And I think that's a pretty cool shot coming into it. Uh, we have our, our tower right there. We never went up to the top of our elevator shaft, did we? Uh, when we were down in our mine, we never went up to the top of the head frame. And that does have a pretty good view of the business district. So why don't we actually head over there real quick and we'll just take that in. Uh, we got to be careful not to fall down the elevator shaft now since the elevator is actually all the way down in our mine. Uh, so we'll just take the ladder up here to the very tippy top of our head frame. Uh, where we have another little detail built in again, I, you know, I want these builds to feel more complete. So we have this little gear here, which enables us to, to pull up our elevator from down in the mine. You know, it's just things that make it seem like it's more than just a shell. Um, you know, there's actual details in here that look pretty cool. And I, I, I just, I can't get over the fact that we've done this, th this business district right here. I can't wait to, to actually see more. Um, let's not even go down that way. Let's take the express route down. <laughs> let's jump off this into our little fountain right here, Geronimo, and then we will be safe. Um, <laughs> let's close this, make sure no villagers fall down there into the mine. Uh, that would be bad. Uh, but yeah, now we can get on out of here and go explore some other stuff around our city. What are you guys up to? Uh, should we give them a little bit of privacy? I mean, they they obviously don't want privacy. They're out here on the street. You guys need to, to go somewhere with that. Anyway. Ooh, okay. I am back. I need to take a quick break. My voice is just, uh, but, uh, yeah, we can, we can start moving on. Uh, I think we left off on our house right here. What is currently our house, but will not be for long. So let's go inside. We can take a peek at it. I have my comfy chair right here. I had a nice view looking out this window. That is no longer there. Um, so that's one of the reasons I want to move out. Uh, we have our chanting set up right here. We have our bed right here. Little storage area back here uh, with some spare armor right here. I believe this is our fire uh, protection armor. Yeah, fire protection. Uh, we don't really use that unless we're going into the nether for an extended period of time doing building. I hate building in the nether, by the way. Uh, up here we have our attic where Mr. Hanzo used to be. Uh, he is no longer with us, sadly. Um, yeah, and I guess that means we can go ahead and get rid of uh, these doors that Mr. Hanzo was registering for us. Because we no longer need them to breed villagers. Like, uh, that's the reason this whole thing was here to begin with. Uh, so there, there is actually more of an interior to this I took out to make room for these doors. So we'll have to make some repairs here so we don't have like pumpkins and stuff showing through the walls uh, because that's super ugly. Uh, so we will take care of that. We'll figure out like how I had this before where it wasn't like all, you know, but yeah, I mean, not not a whole lot of room to play with out here, uh, but just just a few little things. Uh, but yeah, as I said, Mr. Hanzo, he's no longer with us. We're going to hand this this place over to him. Let this be his house. Uh, but since he is no longer with us, we have to think of something else to do with it. And that is where all this table and dining area stuff comes in. This is actually now the future site of the Enchanted Snack Bar. Kind of an offshoot of the Enchanted Pickaxe down there. That's uh, That provides food for our miners. This will provide food for the rest of the business district. Now, speaking of villagers we lost, Mr. Hanzo, we have our villager memorial up here. Uh, kind of a little tribute to the villagers we lost in constructing the business district. Uh, Balthazar, Samus, Mr. Hanzo, Zampano. Uh, you know, just a little something to remember them by. The ones of note, you know. Uh, it used to be over there in our farming district, but we kind of moved over here when we built the stables. And this is, I think, more fitting since, you know, they did give their lives uh, to build the building or business district. Uh, I guess now we can head over here to our garden center and check that out real quick. Uh, this is where we get all our dyes and stuff like that from the uh, the Luna Garden Center. Um, so up here we have like, uh, you know, cocoa beans and flowers and stuff like that. Uh, the double high flower farm right here, pretty simple. You just click a button and uh, you start getting flowers from that. Uh, just bone meal dispensing and whatnot. Over here we have just like some decorative flowers. Right here we have our cocoa bean farm. Uh, where basically we just push a button and the cocoa beans automatically fall off. They get harvested. We just pick them all up and then we do have to replant them manually and I'll go ahead and do that real quick. That's why I divide it in two so I don't have to like replant the entire thing. Uh, every time we do a harvest, you know, I could just get what we need and start moving on with our lives. Uh, so basically you just have to put them up here like this and how this whole thing works is that there's a piston down here and you can kind of see the redstone I didn't do a great job of hiding that, but a uh, piston down here, piston up top that pushes the, the log back down once the bottom piston pushes it up. Uh, and I believe you always have to manually replant these. That's why I kind of made it short, uh, just so it's 
it's just for ease of access, you know? Um, so let's go ahead and plant these up here. As you can see, we ended up with plenty more cocoa beans in our inventory that we can go ahead and store in this chest for later. Uh, so harvesting, you know, it, it does a good job of it. We're not going to run short on those. Um, and we'll go ahead and put these in here as well because I don't want to fill up my inventory. My inventory is already just getting a bunch of random stuff in it from our journey so far. Uh, but over here is our flower farm area. And this is where we get all the blue dye from throughout our city, not in there, in this chest right here. Uh, you can see we got plenty of it, but let's go ahead and turn this on. You can watch how fast they actually do come in. We'll let that run for a second while we go over here and check out our cactus farm where we get our green dye. Uh, and basically, this is just a, a standard cactus farm. I mean, you kind of see up in there just cactus on top of sand blocks uh, with glass panes to actually break the cactus, put into the water stream. And you can see they flow down there mostly because of how the water is. Like, they mostly flow in to the left um so you can kind of see like how much we have in here if we open this up right here a pretty good amount if we open this up again pretty good amount but then we come over here where the cactus is actually flowing to and you can see this chest is almost full yet again um and what's going to happen here is once that chest does fill up there's a separate water stream that's going to kind of push the cacti along and more evenly distribute them once this chest is actually full uh so that's why i'm not worried about like you know the uneven distribution as of right now but you can hear this uh this dye farm now running and you can just see the dye Pouring in here just crazy crazy amounts of blue dye more than we're ever going to need to be honest with you But I do use a lot of it uh, because that's what we make all our glass out of all our glass if you notice is light blue So we do use this light blue dye quite a bit throughout our city and we will continue to use it throughout our city uh, And right over here. We have our other dyes our, our random flowers and stuff like that Which mostly I use to get this light gray dye uh, I mean, that's pretty much what I use it for. I don't have a huge use for the yellows and the reds, uh, but seeds, we get seeds from there as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, pretty much it for the garden center. It's just a nice place to walk through, really. I, like, even if you're not collecting dye, it's just like a nice little area to come and take a, take a leisurely stroll throughout here. Um, but moving on this way, you can see we have another beacon fountain right there. Uh, we have a little storage building back here with a bunch of chests in it, much like over there at the FOL enforcement office. Uh, we have a bunch of chests in here because we actually in both these areas uh, we took down mountains I'm gonna try to hop up here real quick to actually show you the mountain that we took down uh, to make room for our city if I can just pop up here real quick okay uh, you can see that we actually flattened an entire mountain right here. We're flattening it out to make room for expansion in our city. Uh, we did the same thing over there by the FOL uh, offices. And you can see this just it's just so full of stone and dirt and all the stuff that comes from tearing down a mountain. Uh, so we got a whole bunch of this stuff just, just waiting to be used throughout the construction of our city. Uh, you know, the, I got these little storage buildings here, crafting table, bed, and stuff like that in them. Uh, just, I mean, they're not really t meant to be part of the, the city. It's just like, you know, it, it's better than just having that stuff laying out on the ground. Is the only reason I really put those there. Um, but I guess that's pretty much it. I should have slept through the night while we were up there. Um, but I didn't, uh, but I think that's pretty much it for the business district of Luna. As I said, this whole place was about a year in the making. And the reason for that was resource gathering was just so hard throughout the year. You know, that's the biggest time sink. If you play survival Minecraft, like resource gathering is just a huge time investment, but this whole place was geared towards making that resource gathering easier. Uh, we have our beacons now, which we can collect lots of stone, even though we have chests and chests full of it. Um, um, and we have our, uh, you know, our tree farm where we can collect all kinds of different woods and stuff like that automatically overnight without us even paying attention to it, you know. And uh, we have just all kinds of like we have our super smelt right here. We can get our get our, you know, stuff smelted super fast. Everything should be much, much easier from here on out as far as resource collecting goes. Um, so, you know, a whole year in the making for this part. But this was the hard part. Everything we get to do now is just just being creative and expanding and building and, and doing all kinds of fun stuff, which I am really, really looking forward to um, and, and expanding this world. And you would think that after a year, my motivation would wane, but it hasn't. Seeing the progress, it makes it all worthwhile and it makes it so I want to I want to do more. I want to. Can you open this door, please? Uh, these villagers, I swear, they they just get in my way all the time. I, I put this trap door up right here in front of these storage buildings to keep them from coming in here uh, because they prevent me from sleeping, from gathering my stuff. 
But this is pretty convenient as I can just wake up in the glass and travel through the window without the beds placed. There is one thing we didn't do. Um, I haven't completed this yet. Our little scaffolding rental shop. And you, you guys know I like to use slime blocks as my scaffolding because they're just so easy to, to break and get down once you're ready to actually go down. You just kind of boom and then you're done. Um, so this is kind of over top of our slime farm, a little bit offset, but uh, we can make it work. We're going to basically bring the slime blocks all the way up here to the top so I don't have to go all the way down in our mind to actually collect all my stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a future project. And you know what? Speaking of future projects, uh, let's go ahead and get to some of the future districts of Luna that we are going to be building in the episodes to come. Uh, so first, I think we will go out here to our farming district. We'll have to circle around our little monument right here and uh, past Deputy Iron Mike. Excuse me, Deputy Iron Mike. You're doing a great job, by the way. He's our newest Iron Golem. Um, but yeah, we have to come out this way. And this gate is not actually going to be here. It's going to be raised up kind of like this one is. The only reason it's sealed off right now is to protect our villagers because I don't want them wandering out here. It's not safe out here at night. And also because... You know, this is where we would likely have a zombie siege if we were to have one. Uh, so you see here we have a lot of skeleton horses because we kept getting hit by thunderstorms that bring these guys around. Uh, we have our two original ones over here. We have Skullberry. This is a new one. He's not named yet. We have Skullberry. And in the next stall over here, uh, I believe this guy right here, he is... Bonanas. Um, so we have Skullberry and Bananas. Those are our two original skeleton horses. We've had several more come to this area. It looks like they are outside. They somehow managed to phase through their gates. Uh, so they are out here in the yard where they are not supposed to be, but it looks like they're trying to get back inside at least. That's that's something. You know, they're well trained. They are well trained horses. <laughs> but this is our little stable. The start to it, you know, not everything in this area I, I would call complete yet. Like there's still more work we're going to be doing around here. Um, but there is an upstairs to this. We have a little hayloft up here, uh, which we can go and check out real quick because we store a bunch of hay up here. And also, hey, it's Wesley, our stable boy. He's doing a great job looking after the horses for us. He's also registering these doors right here, uh, which is, again, to prevent zombie sieges from happening inside the city. Like, if they were to happen, they would happen out here, and he's safe. Like, if they occur, like, out here on these grounds, he is safe up there in his hayloft. Uh, the same thing goes for the villager, Jumping Jack, we have over here at Jumping Jack Lantern pumpkin shack where we're going to head to next um so let's go ahead and make our way over here to jumping jack lanterns and uh you can kind of see like what we're planning to do with the landscaping actually let me get a better view of what we plan to do with the landscaping out in the farming district um so if we pop up here real quick you can see we're using a lot of variety a lot of vegetables a lot of leaf blocks and, and various textures here just to make it a little more farmy farmy <laughs> and uh we added some details we're going to be adding more and more details over here like this wagon uh, which i think was pretty cool just like kind of out of the way hidden um you can also see over there we have another one of our little temporary storage buildings and uh beyond that you can see part of that mountain that i was talking about earlier the another mountain we took down to make this whole area here like this area was just a mountain we kind of shave the top off of it to uh to make this whole thing work because i went like gradual rolling hills i didn't want like abrupt cliff faces you know now the reason why this place is called jumping jack lanterns is because we have jack lanterns jumping as the pumpkins are getting harvested uh so you can kind of see that here uh basically uh, you have a mine cart that goes and activates pistons which knocks these bits of land up activates the uh or makes the jack lanterns jump as you can see harvest the pumpkins uh the first time it goes around the second time it goes around it will collect the pumpkins that it just harvested um i'll go underneath and kind of show you what i mean by that uh in case it's not clear because i feel like that's not clear um, so we have the item elevators right here that put everything in the hoppers into the chest in front. We will show you that in just a minute. Uh, but let's go down here to the maintenance area, which is a much more complete maintenance area than what I've been showing you so far. This is kind of like how I like my maintenance areas to look. But you can see it's unloading those pumpkins that I collected into the item elevator right now. It's going upstairs for storage. Um, so let's hop up here. I'll show you the harvesting mechanism real quick. Basically, we have tracks that run around. Uh, we have these activator rails next to the piston. So when the minecart goes around, it makes the piston go up, harvest the pumpkins. When it comes back, it follows the same track back, but it collects the pumpkins on the way back. That's the idea. At least we have an etho hopper clock right here to make sure only one side of this farm is running at a time. Uh, just for aesthetic reasons, no real reason. It's less effective, I guess, overall. Uh, but we don't need like tons and tons of pumpkins because well, we already have tons and tons of pumpkins. We're getting them faster than we can actually use them. Um, so let's make our way around front and I will show you the actual Jumping Jack-O-Lantern's pumpkin check. 
Uh, that is, if I can manage to get over there, um, I've lost my jump boost, so now I have to navigate a lot more carefully <laughs> around here because I don't want to trample wheat, uh, which we've done plenty already. But this is Jumping Jack Lantern's Pumping Shack. This is Jumping Jack right here. Uh, as you can see, he's got more supplies coming in as we speak. So there goes some more pumpkins up there. Uh, and like I said, we have tons of pumpkins from this. This is much more effective than I thought it would be. Like, you know, we've even been pulling from these. We've been using a lot of pumpkins to make a lot of jack-o'-lanterns to actually use throughout our city. Uh, and yeah, so we need to kind of restock a little bit, but uh, we're doing pretty good. We have a random slime block in here. Um, we're doing pretty good as far as pumpkins go. You're doing a great job jumping jack, keeping this place stocked up. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to see here at Jumping Jack Lanterns. This is pretty much our farming district as of right now. There will be much more stuff. There are plans for expansion much, much further back, you know. Uh, think carrot farms, think potatoes, think wheat, think think all kinds of farmy stuff. That's, that's what's going to go on here in the not so distant future. Uh, but let's make our way over into the Waterside District. We're actually not going to explore the Waterside District right now uh, because I have plans for that later on in the episode. Uh, so what we're going to do is kind of head over here to the Nether Portal and I'll show you the Withering House. Uh, before we do that though, let me go ahead and kind of show you how far the expanse of the Farming District is going to go. It'll go all the way back this way and kind of follow to the, to the beach right over there. And as far as our Waterside District goes, that's going to follow this inside circle and go to the mouth of the bay uh, that is right over there and we're gonna have a like a waterside entrance right over there as well um, And I guess you guys can just ignore the like crisscrossing like uh, scaffolding or whatever the the stone blocks and all that stuff That go around here. Those are going to be taken down eventually. It's not there permanently uh, You see that is where my little surprise is. So I have my dispensers right up there. Uh, we will get to that later Let's head over to the withering house right now now, there's not going to be a whole lot of stuff to show you in the nether. We haven't got the nether hub built or anything like that. It's just hallways of netherrack. But right over here, we do have our little gas farm, our little manual gas farm, where we don't really get gas drops. But we collect them and put them in our science lab. So basically, they just roll down this way through this tunnel right here. We kind of manually push them through the tunnel. Um, and I think this is pretty much just a bunch of netherrack. I'm, I'm fairly certain there's nothing useful in here. We got a gas tier. Uh, but that is about it. Uh, but yeah, let's let me head to the withering house it is quite a distance away and I have a little bit of a hike ahead of me So I will just meet you guys over there in a few minutes and we are almost there We are almost at our descent to the withering house. Uh, this also leads to our jungle portal uh, Which is right here and we have not uh, built in any other biomes yet Like we haven't built anywhere like else in the world really because we have so much to do in our city first before we consider expansion at all But this is the withering house. You see we have a gas spawning right there uh, I started slabbing over this place to make areas non-spawnable so we get better drops like that island right there I'd like to blow that up really uh, but yeah over here you can see I kind of just like gave up on the slabbing it's so much work um, but yeah, we got the nether fortresses slabbed over so we don't have other blazes and wither skeletons spawning outside of our of our uh, Little farm here. It's pretty much just pigmen and gas and magma cubes stuff like that that we have to worry about that kind of take up the That kind of like interfere with the uh, the mob cap But you know, I'm not super worried about it because we our, our rates are fine um, So the withering house the concept of this build is to have a house That's kind of withering away as you can see like it's kind of a little decrepit a little old But how we turn this thing on is we hit this switch right here and now our farm is officially active um, and it take a few minutes to warm up for our mobs to like work their way all through the system end up in this fireplace where we can take out our sword and kind of poke them on the feet until they give us their drops uh, we could do that automatically as well we have our blaze thing right here we have our wither auto killer right here um, and I don't think the blaze one is on is like I feel like that's not I feel like something may have gone wrong with the auto killing mechanism for some reason. I will check that out. Let me go check that out real quick. Uh, no, I gotta go the other way. I gotta go the other way. Uh, before we go over there, let me just go ahead and show you the rest of this stuff. Uh, so we have our item elevator right here. Basically, all the all the drops we get in this fireplace will go into the. I hear them. I hear them. They're not coming down. Yeah, something something's broken here. All right, so our bouncing mechanism and our auto killing mechanism both seem to be broken. Um, so the last time I was here, I probably left before everything had a chance to shut off completely, which is why we have a ladder that goes up so I don't leave too quickly, but I guess I must have. So let me go ahead and fix some of that stuff. Yeah, it looks like this clock just stopped right here for some reason. So if we jumpstart, if we just do something like this and jumpstart it, 
Uh, now it looks like our bouncer mechanism is working, uh, which means it should be releasing the mobs into our fireplace for us to poke on the feet. So we'll go check out that first, then we'll go and try to fix the auto-killing mechanism. Uh, but yeah, there we go. They've just been piling up up there, but now they're down here where we can actually start taking them out. Uh, and normally I do auto-kill the blazes. I don't have a need for a whole bunch of blaze rods and stuff like that, so I'll try to just aim for the wither skeletons and avoid the blazes pretty much. And we did get a skull right there. I saw it. Did you see it? We aggroed a blaze. We aggroed it. This is why I hate blazes. Uh, you know, uh, let's just turn on the auto-killer. and There we go. Basically, it's just a crusher that'll take care of the blazes for me. Uh, but yeah, this place right here did not always look like this. It was not always burnt to a crisp. That's because we aggroed some blazes. They set all my wood on fire, just kind of burned this place down. And we kind of dressed it up to, to represent that. Uh, <laughs> I hate blazes so much. Uh, but yeah, we have our item elevator. All those drops that we just got, they're going up through this way and up into our storage system. Uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and fix the auto killer real quick, and then I will come back. Yeah, it was the clock thing again. The clock had stopped for some reason, but everything should be good now. But before we go back over here, let me go ahead and show you the rest of this farm. So this door closes once the farm is on. That means we cannot leave until we actually shut the farm off. It is a safety precaution so I don't mess stuff up like I have. And uh, to get to the actual farm itself, we have to go through this way. This is our little back way up there. There is a separate entrance that's like the preferred entrance, but once the farm is on, this is the only other way up. Uh, so right here we have my custom nether mob sorter, uh, which let's see if I can kind of give you guys a better view of what's going on here. Our skeletons, there's a skeleton, wither skeleton blazes, they will all stay in this kind of central column and get funneled down into our fireplace below to get taken out. Um, the only mob that doesn't go through there is zombie pigmen. Zombie pigmen get funneled somewhere else. Uh, but this whole system right here is just to, just to check and see what type of mob they really are before they end up where they need to go. So zombie pigmen will actually end up getting pushed into this area right here, this little holding area. And I don't think we're going to get any up here because zombie pigmen spawns are actually pretty rare in this farm. I think because they have so many other places out in the nether to spawn. But basically the idea is they will get carted off 128 blocks to safety. Uh, because I do not hurt what I view as passive mobs since zombie pigmen don't attack me. I view them as passive mobs. I will not actually hurt them. Um, but yeah... Uh, if we don't see any in the next few minutes, I cannot give you a demonstration of that like right now Maybe what we'll do is pull up some archival footage if I don't see one in the next few minutes and uh, Show you it that way and then we'll move on and we have a pigman. We have a pigman. Let's see if we can get this to work Yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I guess right now we'll go ahead and check out our spawning floors up here. Um, so let's go ahead and move on up and uh, we'll try to get up there before the mobs stop spawning because we get too close for them to actually spawn uh, within a certain range of us. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, make our way up this way and you can kind of see like what's going on up here. We have our flying machines that kind of funnel all our mobs into this crack right here where they fall down into the sorting system. Uh, let's go up a little bit higher and we'll see if we can see that happening. There we go. So you can see those blazes will get pushed this way and ultimately end up falling down just like those guys did from the top floor and they will go down into the sorting system. So we have three spawning platforms right here uh, which are centered over a nether crossroad so we definitely get our wither skeletons and we don't get big magma cubes. I'll show you why. We got these, uh, these like, uh, cobblestone walls that kind of break up the platform right here, stopping the big magma cubes from spawning. So really all we get in here are a bunch of wither skeletons, skeletons, blazes, occasionally pigmen, not very often, but it does happen. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and see what happens after they fall down there. Uh, if we come down this way, you can see they make their way into a, uh, little funnel mechanism right here, which basically just goes back and forth until it knocks them down a hole in the center, which takes them down to our sorting system. I don't see any mobs back here, so I can't really demonstrate that too well for you. Um, but if we, uh, I don't know, just wait to see if we find one. There's a wither skeleton right there. You kind of see him in the back. He is gone now. He fell down the hole. Uh, but basically what happens is once they fall down the hole, they make their way into the sorting system. They get sorted into their various areas, either the fireplace or to safety. And from there, whatever happens to them happens. And that's pretty much it for the withering house. So we'll go ahead and turn this farm off after I double check that the auto killing mechanism is actually working now. We have a bunch of mobs that accumulated down here from the time we were upstairs. This right here auto kills the blazes. Now keep in mind, we don't get any drops from this at all. Blazes do not drop blaze rods unless you kill them. 
Uh, so that's just uh, to save me the hassle of having them get aggroed and burning down my place. This right here will start auto-killing the Wither Skeletons. So this is how we get our AFK Bones and Charcoal. We just take out our Wither Skeletons and they just start dropping Bones and Charcoal all over the place. But that is enough of the nether for right now. Let's get back here to Luna, back here to our waterside district. We'll do a quick tour around this place and then we'll kind of wrap this whole thing up. Uh, so, as you can see here, we have a whole little dock system built in. Uh, it kind of stops abruptly right here. It's going to continue further than this, uh, but we need to do some terraforming first before we can, you know, actually determine where everything really needs to be. Uh, so, you know, this is all non-spawnable. Uh, half slabs throughout here. We have fence posts and all that stuff. In these corners right here, we have lights kind of hidden underneath the chests and behind blocks and stuff. Uh, these chests are now empty, as you can see, but uh, I guarantee as we start working out here, these things are going to start filling up. Uh, uh, but yeah, let's work our way to the center here. We have our fourth and last beacon fountain from the business district. This is actually the waterside district. So we have three in the business district, one in the waterside district so far. Uh, we have our other travel beacon in the uh, in our chest in the mine over there. And we have the other one in the, the mining mesa, which is kind of far away. And I'm not going to go over there today. Uh, that's a travel through the nether again. But yeah, I, so we have six beacons total. Um, and we'll, we will need to get more as we start building out in this area. But yeah, um, this is the Waterside District of Luna, the future Waterside District, which will connect to our business district. We'll make sure all this stuff kind of merges together. So we'll get some rows in here. We might add some shops out in the Waterside District to kind of reflect what we build out here in the business district to kind of sell out here. I think that would make sense. Maybe make some of the stuff easier to access. Uh, right here we have some roads that we actually were doing some planning with. Uh, we ultimately went with this kind right here. But yeah, we were doing some planning out here. Uh, we kind of decided, you know, we want those roads for our business district. We want these kind for our farming district over there. And uh, we may use some of the other designs elsewhere in the city. But before it gets too late, let's head over here to the Flying Wolf Man. We'll do a final tour of that. And, uh, you know... We got uh, different levels of our dock over here, so we might end up building some other ships too, uh, some smaller ships. This is the only ship I've ever made though so far. This is the first ship I've ever made, and I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. So we can make our way over here and kind of check this out real quick. This is our AFK fishing boat, manned by uh, Kobo right here and Cho. So we have Cho and Kobo who are a part of the ship, a part of the crew. They are making sure this thing is running smoothly for us, doing all the maintenance on our AFK fish farm. Uh, and if we go up here, you can kind of see, like, we'll just okay, take a quick walk around. You can see we have our little Flying Wolfman thing right here. We have our Sky Access. That was not supposed to happen. We have our Sky Access for our broken fish farm right there. Uh, and let me see if I can fix that. I don't think we can. This is a Captain's Quarters where we have our fish farm, and I believe that string is gone. Yeah, it's down through the hoppers, down through the system. Uh, so I may have to fix this, but uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. Let's fix our broken fish farm real quick while we're up here. Uh, so down here is where we have all of our storage and stuff like that. And we'll see if we can find our string, which we are not going to because the fish farm is not on. It's not actually shooting stuff through the hoppers. Everything is stuck somewhere. So we'll see if we can find some extra string in here, maybe. Um, no, no, we don't have any. We have the uh, Dread Pirate Roberts right here, though, who is keeping an eye on things down here for us. I do appreciate that, Dread Pirate Roberts. Uh, so we have other systems and stuff down here, too. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit more. Uh, we have, like, this is a fish-friendly fish farm. Uh, we have these droppers right here. Any fish we catch actually get fired out back into the sea. So it's catch and release system. Uh, but in here, hopefully, yes, we do have some string. Let me go upstairs, fix that, uh, fix our fish farm real quick. Because if I don't do it now, I will forget about it. And I'll come here and do some fishing and wonder why nothing is working. Uh, that's just something that would happen to me. So there we go. That's much better. Oh, man. This is so much talking. This is more talking than I think I've ever done. But let's go ahead and get back down here. We can kind of wrap up the tour of the Flying Wolfman. And hopefully, as it gets dark, we can kind of wrap this whole episode up. Uh, so... Right here is our stackable items chest where we put useful stackable items. Um, I'm going to need more ink sacks. I'm going to need a whole lot more of those. So we may have to do an AFK fishing session in the near future to restock. Uh, right here we have all our enchanted books that we get. Uh, we go through these whenever we need any enchantments. Uh, water bottles and saddles right here. Uh, everything else we just kind of throw away. We have a whole flushing system here. Uh, these chests are not hooked up to it. These are additional books and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go through and kind of pick out everything we want. We'll put our books and stuff in here. We'll put all our useful items in there. Everything else will get flushed. Uh, so we have a switch right here that we pull and everything will go into those water streams that we leave in the chest. They'll go into those water streams, go around this way and eventually hit that cactus right there and just be destroyed. And that's how we empty out our entire system when we're ready to do so. Uh, 
Yeah, but I mean, we're not going to do that right now because I do need to get some stuff out of here. For instance, ink. We need name tags. Uh, we want to clear all the books out of there and stuff like that. Uh, so we will do that eventually. Um, but the system is not even full yet, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so the Dread Pirate Roberts is actually registering doors while he's down here. Um, so they are a certain distance away from the nearest doors in the city over there, which means it's expanding the radius of the village and making sure zombie sieges don't occur within the city walls. Hopefully, theoretically, and hopefully he stays out here as well. Uh, but I think that is pretty much it for the Flying Wolfman as dusk is upon us. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our way over here. And I have one last thing to show you guys before we say goodbye today. Uh, and that is going to be a fireworks display. Yay. Ah, and uh, yeah, I've never actually done a fireworks display before. So hopefully this turns out OK. Um, and I kind of used up the last of my gunpowder. I don't have a whole lot of it. We don't have like a, a creeper farm or anything like that. So hopefully this works. I am really counting on it. I put it on a little delay so we can run over here and kind of get into position before it actually starts. Hopefully we can see everything from right here. Oh, it's going off already. There we go. Oh, man. OK, that is that is awesome. I am super psyched. Uh, but yeah, I just want to thank you guys for coming out and hanging out with me today. I really hope you enjoyed the world. Uh, and as I said, there's a whole lot more to come. So please stick around for that. And, you know, if you've enjoyed this episode, please feel free to hit that little thumbs up button. That would mean a whole lot to me. If you guys want to see more, please remember to subscribe. And as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. You have no idea. Until next time, I am Lobo, and I will see you guys later.